What's going on everybody? Alonzo here with GolfCoastSmoke.com and on today's episode we're talking all about the Weber Smoky Mountain. In our opinion, this is the best smoker for the money. I'm going to show you how I set it up. I'm going to show you the dinner that we're making today. Let's get right into this video and let me show you what to do. Now you guys know how much we love our Weber Smoky Mountain. We've been talking about it for years. I've said it once, I'll say it again. It's almost like I'm beating a dead horse. This is the best smoker, at least in my opinion, for the money that you're paying. It's really versatile. We could show you guys so many different things that we've done on the Weber Smoky Mountain. You can basically use it like a Weber kettle. It's just an amazing, an amazing tool to have in your arsenal. We will never get rid of this thing. So we have officially partnered up with Weber and joined their Friends of Weber program. We're gonna be bringing you Weber related content for the next year and hopefully beyond that. I wanna thank you guys for putting us in the situation where we're able to partner up with a company like Weber. You guys know how much we love Weber. We use it pretty much every single video. The majority of our stuff is on a Weber kettle, a Weber Smoky Mountain, and we just have a bunch of Weber products. So when they reached out to us, it was honestly like a dream come true. So thank you to you guys. We really, really, really appreciate the support. Let's get right into this cook. The first thing we want to do is get our ribs seasoned up and today we're kind of focusing on the Weber Smoky Mountain and just how great of a cooker it is. I know I've talked about it a few times before but I also do want to show you guys a pretty basic setup when it comes to our ribs. I'm showing you guys the top of this ribs but on this one I'm just going to go ahead and score the membrane. I'm kind of curious how everything's going to turn out. I can't remember who I saw do this recently but I'm just really like I said, I'm just kind of curious. I'm just testing it out to see if the outcome is just as good as if you pull the membrane. We're going to try two different things on these racks today. So on the first one, I'm going to start with regular yellow mustard as our binder. And if you guys don't know what a binder is, it's just something that helps the seasoning stick to the meat. So typically you don't really get flavor from the binders or that's what everyone says. And today on our second rack, we're really going to try and get flavor from our binder. We're hoping it works out. Once we get our binder on, we're going to start with the light layer of our Southern Bell. Now, Southern Bell was originally made to be a beef seasoning, but it works really, really good on everything. You can see the black pepper there, which is going to be perfect for these ribs. It has some sugar, it has some salt, some garlic, and a few other flavors that are just incredible. And on top of that, we're going to put our Southern Hospitality. This is sweet, this is smoky, and it brings that beautiful barbecue color to every single cook that you've got. This was designed for pork, chicken, and fish, but again, I've seen people use this on everything. And you don't have to go overboard with these seasonings. A medium coat is gonna be just fine. There's gonna be plenty of flavor there. Now I'm just gonna flip the ribs over and do the same exact thing on the top side. Southern Bell first, and Southern Hospitality right on top. Now that we're done with our first rack on the second one, we're still gonna be using mustard as a binder, but this one has a little bit of jalapenos in it. I love it on sandwiches. I'm curious to see how this is gonna turn out. Maybe a little much there, but it's okay. So there's actually chunks of jalapeno in here, so there is gonna be some added texture. One of the things I'm a little worried about is we're gonna be smoking this for a long time. I'm not sure what the flavor of the jalapenos is gonna be like, in the end, but again, we're just gonna test this out today. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing with the seasonings. We're gonna start with the light layer of Southern Bell and then come right over top with this Southern Hospitality. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing again. Southern Bell and Southern Hospitality. Now we're just gonna let the seasonings kind of soak into the meat for a few minutes. We're gonna get the Weber Smoky Mountain set up and that's really what this video is all about. In my honest opinion, and I've said this plenty of times before, the Weber Smoky Mountain is the best smoker that you can get for the money. Very versatile. I'm going to show you exactly how I set it up. We're going to cook multiple things today. So we've got these ribs. A little bit later, we'll put on some fajitas. We'll put on some baked potatoes. It is very, very versatile. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, but truly, this is my favorite smoker. The only reason that sometimes I use other things is because I need a little bit more room. So that is one thing to think about, but... I just absolutely love the Weber Smoky Mountain and I recommend it to absolutely anybody. Now in order to set up my Weber Smoky Mountain, I'll do a few things different than people would normally do and I'm going to show you exactly how I set this up. So we're going to start with an empty charcoal basket and we're going to make sure that it's filled up exactly halfway. I'm not quite done yet, but I did want to say that we want it halfway. Next I'm going to put some charcoal starters right in the middle. Now I'm going to get the starters nice and hot. At this point, even though we're not ready to cook, I'm going to put the barrel in its spot and I'm going to completely remove the front door. Now I'm going to completely close two vents on the bottom. There's plenty of oxygen from the open door to get those charcoals lit. 
And when you notice your starters are just about completely out, I'm gonna put my wood chunk right over top of that and I'm gonna put my second set of wood chunks right in front of the one open vent. That's gonna cause everything to come this way and we're gonna get that double burst method. Now we're gonna put the door back on. This absolutely will get to temp. It's just gonna take a few minutes. At this point, we're nowhere near our target temperature. We're only sitting at 110 degrees on the inside of our cooker, but we're gonna put the ribs on anyway. And if you guys are worried about dirty smoke, don't be at all. Take a look at the smoke coming out the top vent. It could obviously be a little bit cleaner, but it's gonna clean up over time. Now what we wanna concentrate on is this temperature. Once it gets to around 250 degrees, we're gonna crack that bottom vent to about halfway and make sure we stay steady around 275 to 300 degrees. So one of the things that I didn't mention earlier is that I don't use a water pan at all. Right now there's a diffuser plate in there, but most of the times I don't even use that. The vents on top are fully open and they're always going to be fully open. I never adjust those at all. And if you notice your smoker is getting a little bit too hot, you'll typically only see that when you start taking the lid off. So when you take the lid off, oxygen is going to get into the smoker and that can cause things to start to flare up. Especially if you're cooking chicken or anything that causes grease fires, then you're definitely going to want to make sure that you watch out for that. If it does get a little hot, don't worry. Just put the lid back on and it's going to adjust right between 275 and 300 degrees the whole time. It's been an hour and a half on our ribs and you can see that we're sitting right at 289 degrees. I told you guys that once you get it set, it's going to run between 275 and 300, which in my opinion is a dream. Let's take a look at these ribs together. We'll kind of go through the cook, but like I told you guys, I just want to show you how versatile, how easy and how really amazing this smoker is. And you guys can see that the ribs are looking really good. Everything is just on point exactly where I want them to be. So now I'm going to start hitting with a little bit of spritz just to add some flavor there. Today for our spritz, we're using a little bit of barbecue sauce and water. I just diluted it. So I'm just going to spritz all over the top, make sure that there's no dry spots. And like I said, I'm just looking to add a little bit of flavor and just make sure that this doesn't dry out. Now, one of the things that I've been doing with my ribs is I've been flipping them over just to make sure I get color everywhere. I'm not too worried if this doesn't look perfect. Right now, I'm just worried about getting flavor and getting smoke all over these ribs. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip these over. And you guys can definitely see that there's a difference in the color on the bottom of these ribs. I want that color to be on the top of the ribs as well. So we're just going to let that smoke hit these. We're going to continue to flip them and then we'll wrap them in a little bit. Not for very long. And like I told you guys, you guys can do this however you want to smoke these ribs. I just wanted to show you that it's very, very simple to do with the Weber Smoky Mountain. So we're just going to keep rocking between 275 and 300 degrees and then we'll come back when it's time to wrap. And I just quickly wanted to show you guys, I wouldn't do this at home, but I took the barrel off because I wanted to show you that look at that fire that's actually really cool that that started right now but the vent right here is the one that we have open so we started in the middle and everything is burning this way and that's exactly what I want with my fire the reason I want that is just so I can control it over time so this is exactly why I set up my Weber Smoky Mountain like this again don't do this at home right now my fire is going to be way too hot but it's okay we'll adjust and we'll make everything work out I'm going to put the barrel back on, but again, just wanted to show you that that's exactly what my double burst method is, my double smoke burst. I don't even know. I have a terrible name for it, but that's why I like to do it like this. It's been just over three hours on our ribs, and we want to take a look at them again, and we want to see if it's time to wrap them up. So another thing that I've kind of been doing is letting them roll a little bit longer just so I can get that beautiful color on both sides before I started wrapping. The great thing about barbecue is it's always evolving. You can always look to get better. Not necessarily that you had been doing things wrong, but you can always do things differently. And I think that sometimes that yields a better outcome on your cooking. So let's take a look at these ribs. If you guys look at the ribs, they are looking just beyond incredible. A deep red color there, and that's exactly what I'm wanting to see. So I'm just going to pick a little bit of this stuff off here because I still do want these ribs to look and taste good. So I'm just going to pick a few things. Oh, yeah. So right when I flip the ribs over, you guys can see that that's the color that I'm looking for when I'm making these ribs. And that's exactly why I've been flipping them recently, just to make sure that I get it. Now, you'll notice there's no great marks or nothing ugly on this side. As long as you let that bark set on top, you're really not going to mess anything up. So I'm going to go ahead, spritz a little bit more with our barbecue sauce and our water. Nothing crazy. I'm going to put the lid back on for just a second and then we're going to get some foil ready inside and then we're going to wrap these up. So 
This is just gonna be like this for probably another two minutes. The next thing I'm gonna show you is us wrapping these up. Now for our wrap on these ribs, we're just gonna put some butter in here. I'm gonna do four tablespoons per rack. I'm gonna put my ribs right on top and these are gonna go meat side up. Do not forget, we use two different binders today and we are trying to see if we can taste the difference. I got a little bit of our barbecue sauce and water I'll dump right on top just to help steam a little bit. And then we're just gonna wrap everything right up. And now these are ready to go right back on the smoker. Now it's time to talk about the versatility of this grill. We're gonna go ahead and open all the vents up. We want this around 425 degrees. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put some baked potatoes on. We're gonna cook our whole dinner on the Weber Smoky Mountain today. We're gonna throw some poppers in a little bit and some fajitas. We'll show you everything in the end. We're gonna check these ribs in around 30 minutes because we are cooking at a much higher temperature, but I didn't bump up the temps until I put it in the foil. I want that foil to protect everything. We didn't wanna do that while we were smoking them earlier, but these are gonna be done in just a little bit. Around 30 minutes later, let's go ahead and check on our ribs. They are a little bit different on the size, so one might be done before the other, but I just wanna make sure because we're cooking these a lot faster now that they're in the foil. They look and smell really good, flipping them over. They have a nice little flop to them. I can wiggle the bone just a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that these can go a little bit longer. So we'll keep these in here probably for another, let's just say, uh, 20 minutes or so and then we'll recheck them but they are very close to being done just to make sure we're going to check the other rack as well and it actually looks like this larger rack is actually pretty close to done if you flip the ribs over they have a nice little bend to them and there's plenty of bone disintegration so while this one's done and the smaller one isn't let's let this one catch up and then we'll sauce these I have my nephews over today they like sauced ribs so we're going to sauce them up for them then we're going to get dinner completely finished And that's all there is to it with the Weber Smoky Mountain. Again, we truly, truly, truly love this smoker. You saw the B-roll of us slicing up these ribs. We're not gonna slice everything else up yet. We're gonna wait for dinner, but I got my nephew here. He's gonna try out some ribs on camera and let you know how they tasted because I always say they taste good, but I'm curious to see what somebody else thinks. How is it? That's good. You like it? That's really good. <laughs> All right, so if you guys think that I'm lying whenever I say the ribs came out amazing, my nephew, I think that was a pretty genuine response from him. Now, I do want to ask him to try the other one because do not forget, we tried two different binders. I want to see if he could taste the difference in between these two ribs. That one good too? Mm -hmm. I can taste the difference. What, what, what's different to you? That one's more sweet and this one has more barbecue flavor. More barbecue flavor, you think? Does, is there any spice in that at all? Do you taste any spice or no? Yeah. A little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe the, maybe, just maybe, the binder did work. I'm not too sure. I'll try it out myself here in a little bit, and I'll leave a comment down below. I'll ask my wife to also leave a comment down below. But hopefully that jalapeno mustard really just brought a little bit of that extra spice that we were looking for. We're looking for a binder that just adds flavor. In my opinion, there's nothing wrong with adding flavor, even if you're adding a sauce or just anything else, a rib glaze, whatever. So I'm glad that everything turned out good. Don't forget, you can get out and get yourself a Weber Smoky Mountain. They're an incredible, an incredible cooker. As always, we really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Thanks. We'll see you on the next one.